Hi there, my name is Kevin, and in today's video we're going to be exploring position absolute, how it works with position relative, and the z-index, and we're going to try and do it in as short of a time as possible. So when I first got into the whole web thing, I was having a lot of trouble until I learned about position absolute, and then I went crazy with it. I started using it for everything. I come from a print background, and I'm used to just being able to position things exactly where I want in the program. I click, drag, and it's there. And obviously with CSS I couldn't do that, but with position absolute I could until I realized that was a really bad idea. And this was before responsive web design, it still caused its own problems. And now that we're responsive it causes even more problems. In this video what I want to be looking at is how the position absolute works in relation to the whole page. Uh, then we're going to look at how it works in relation to when you put something else in position relative and how you can layer things with the z-index and how the z-index actually works. Alrighty, so we're in CodePen right now and if you look down below in the description you will find the link to this if you want to play around with it yourself. Um, basically I just have a div here. Inside my div I have a paragraph, I have a child div, and then I have more text. So the parent is this big aquamarine or a turquoise color. Uh, I have my two paragraphs of text and in between them this red box which I've just called the child. Uh, and I've made it red and give it a width and a height just so we can see it and see everything. And we're going to be playing around with mostly the child um, to see how this whole position absolute works. So what I'm going to do is on here I'm going to put a position absolute on here. So position just like that. Um, now the main thing with position absolute is it takes things out of the flow of the rest of the document. So here it's a paragraph followed by my div followed by the paragraph which obviously makes it all line up like this. But as soon as I put absolute on here it's going to come out of the flow and you can see the other text is going underneath it. So by default it will stay where it is but it's no longer in the flow, so other things pretty much ignore it. it. It's as if it's not there, and you get this thing where it's going to be jumping on top of other stuff. Um, and pretty much anything that's in the normal flow, no ma even though my paragraph comes after this div, it will the text will still go underneath it. Everything will go underneath something that's positioned absolute by default. Now, where position absolute gets interesting is we can give it the top, bottom, left, and right properties. So I can come in here and say, that my top property is zero. But you'll notice it's not even staying inside the parent anymore. It flies outside of the parent and goes all the way up to the body. And let's just do a left zero on there as well. And it's going to the top zero left zero. And this is pretty much how far away from the top are we and how far away from the left side are we. So we're zero pixels away from the top and we're zero pixels away from the left. Um, and then I could replace top with bottom and it will jump all the way down to the bottom so it's now zero pixels away from the bottom. Another interesting way you can use this, let's get rid of our width and our height and it will disappear for a second, but I can say a top of zero, a bottom of zero, a left of zero and a right of 50% and that's what's going to make up the total size of it. So the top is at zero pixels away from the top, zero pixels away from the bottom, zero pixels away from the left, and 50% away from the right side. And if I put 50 pixels instead of 50%, it will be 50 pixels away from the right side. And you can put any unit you want here, um, 50 m's away from the right side, so on and so forth. And you can mix these up. So let's say I keep my top and bottom but I could also give this a width of 100 pixels. It will be zero pixels away from the top, zero pixels away from the bottom, and it has a width of 100 pixels now. And now um, how absolute relates to relative is, um, as I said, this is all relative to the body right now, and everything will default to being relative you know, this top is zero pixels away relative to the body. So it's zero pixels away from the top of the body. But what if I want it to be zero pixels away from the top of the parent? That's where that position, whoops, position relative comes in. Position absolute items will look for a parent and it could be a grandparent. It doesn't have to be, you know, it can go farther back. It's going to look for something that has position relative that it's inside of. And if it doesn't find that, it will default to the body. So uh, by changing the parent to position relative, now its top is zero, the bottom is zero, and the width, well, the width is staying the same, but we could even do uh, left, let's say left uh, 25% and a right of 25%. 
and now it's top bottom zero left 25 percent away from the left and 25 percent away from the right and this really is the most common way to use absolute positioned elements for me anyway is that the parent has the position relative on it so i can control exactly where the child will be inside of the parent uh, and it just makes my life so much easier being able to do that for certain things honestly guys the thing to remember the most when using position absolute is the parent it's always relative to the last thing that has a relative on it uh, position relative on it and if nothing has the position relative on it then it will be relative to the body and the other thing to remember is that it does take it out of the flow of everything else so if i go back to having a width of 50 pixels and a height of 50 pixels so it goes out of the flow of the rest of the document and other things will go underneath it. And you can also use your Z index now. So Z index of negative one will actually push it backwards and it disappears because it's behind this background now. And you can use Z index for layering things. Uh, so Z index of zero will be there because that's the default is zero on something. Um, let's just say we do my dot parent P whoops a z index will not work unless you have a position on it so i can do position position relative just so it keeps with the flow of the document relative will keep the flow of the document normal on like absolute and then i can do a z index of 10 and the text will jump on top of my absolute position thing so um yeah if two things if you need something to stay uh with the flow of a document but you need to use a z index you can use a position relative on it and if you want it to come out of the flow so it can either go on top or behind other things you want to use your position absolute and then you can position it exactly where you want it to um let's just do a top of zero and a right of uh left of zero on there and back onto this one position relative and there we go. It's stuck in the top left. I can put whatever I need there. It's out of the flow. These are on top because they have the higher Z index. But if I don't have the position relative, that Z index will not work. You need to have a position on something for a Z index to work. And that is super important. And that's how position absolute works. So I hope it makes a lot more sense to you now. But if you do have any questions, please leave a comment below and let me know. I'll be glad to help you out with it. And also, I'd like to know if you have any other questions about some core concepts with HTML and CSS, because I'm assuming if you're watching this, you're relatively new to the whole world of CSS and all of that. So uh, if there's any major core concept, something that you're not understanding properly, leave a comment down below and please let me know about it, because I'd like to make a video that could help you and others out. I do have a series. There should be a card up there somewhere right now uh, linking to it that is about core concepts it's different things i've covered the media queries and some other stuff in there so you can check that out but if you don't see what you're looking for in there let me know about it so thank you so much for watching this video if you haven't already subscribed to my channel i do bring you weekly tips tricks and tutorials just like this one and some more advanced topics as well so if you are interested in that sort of thing please hit the subscribe button and until next time take it easy